I'll give you a method so simple, there's no way you can mess it. But you have to be very observant to what's going through your mind all day long. How many of you have been anxious today? Anxious, all raise your hand, every one of you. How many when you're anxious want to push it away? You want the good news? You want the alleviating words? You want someone to come and tell you that you're okay after all? You want to smile from someone? How, how, come, you, how come you love the tension, the anxiety of waiting for someone else to smile at you? I, I can tell you the answer to that very briefly. It's because you'd rather be enslaved than be free. All right. Now, you have this anxiety. Now, here's the, the method. Now, you try it. You're not going to feel it. I know you can't feel it because your feelings aren't in accord. You're, you don't have higher emotions yet. But you have this anxiety o over anything, <clears throat> future, whatever. I want you to start talking to it consciously. I want you to tell it that you no longer have time for it. If, if you're walking around the... the criminal part of town and all kind of thugs and robbers and bandits came up, you'd tell them, I don't have time for you. In one way or another, you would tell them that. You'd avoid them in the first place. Someone comes up and bothers you in some way, hits you up for money or whatever, you tell them you don't have time for them. Wouldn't you do that? Of course you would. You'd tell them. Because you understand that your social life is not served by them coming into your life. That doesn't happen very often, but all day long, you're inviting anxiety into your house, inviting it to wreck your furniture, waste the room, to take over your life and take over your house. See, here's the reason this method doesn't work for you uh, too well. But I explain it to you so that it will work. Unless you feel something, you won't do it. See, you've got a lot of excited feelings that go with doing wrong things. You're so excited. Someone mentioned revenge, for example. You're so, so excited over someone accepting you into the life that you want a certain, what you call a positive feeling, to attend, to go along with your efforts at telling anxiety to get out of your life and stay out. And you expect, therefore, a similar feeling to come into your life when you say that. It isn't going to happen. I've told you that the mind must be changed first. The mind must be changed first, then the feelings follow. Although you can use feelings, and that's another story. If you were to say anxiety, get out of my life. That's not what I'm here on earth for. You know, any good sentence like that. Say it, and what will happen will be absolutely nothing. Right? But you listen to me. If you tell tension, apprehension, insecurity, if you tell it to get out of your life and you see that nothing happens, that in itself is your perception that you must not expect something to happen so that you don't falsely hope for the usual wrong attending connected emotions to go along with your original statement, which was right only as yet on the mental level. Oh, I, I don't want to put up with that stab of pain that went through me when that person affronted me. I, I did feel bad. All right. But I know that to feel bad is bad. Now, I don't want bad feelings in my life anymore. Oh, wow, what do I do next? I said I don't want them. What do I do next? 
I've said before that I don't want them. And you lied. Cease to love it, you will cease to have it. So you love it. But now you're beginning to understand that you have to stand, you have to stand all alone at every stage, and this is the mental stage of getting rid of anxiety. I don't want you in my life anymore. You stand there, nothing happened. I, you read a positive thinking book that said the heavens are supposed to open and you're supposed to sing. You don't feel like singing. You don't have an emotion at all. Nothing. That is good. That is good to have no feeling. It is good to be blank. To not have any surges of hope. Of saying, oh, I feel better. I was invited. I was accepted. You know what you're doing? You're doing something far more important than you can realize. You're understanding the uselessness of uselessness. Before you called uselessness useful. All, all these wild feelings that you called your allies all, that you call happiness. People are so happy on their wedding day, huh? What happens a few days later? The exaltation. You were, you were hoping for that marriage, that romance, that promotion to do something. But could I say it again? Nothing could do anything for you because there's no one there for anything to be done for or against. Understand? When an anxiety passes through you, you are to start treating it the intelligent way. You're to know that it's there, and if you know that it's there, your voice will be automatic and natural and say, I don't want you. It's all right now. Now listen, if it's, it's perfectly fine if you say, I don't want you, but I really don't know what to do, do next. That's all right. As long as you understand that, that is not weakness, that's honesty. It's when you lie and give yourself all these phony solutions that you're going to have. Even that dumb dinner that you have is your solution from unhappiness, right? The snack at the refrigerator becomes your next great pleasure in life. <coughs> if you will stand all alone, isolated even, on the intellectual level of simply knowing that agitation is wrong, for your mind. That is knowledge, that is power, and it is an insight that you have been handling the whole business all wrong all the time. But now, now you're learning. And what you're learning is that you must be very, very careful that at every step along the way, you must not allow faults allies, in this case, wrong emotions, to enter in and say, I will be your friend, I will take over for, for you, just let me give you a charge, just let me thrill you, and that will be your happiness and the dismissal of your anxiety. And you've accepted this invitation millions of times, and the anxiety continues. Therefore, you have been lying, lied to with your consent. Now, look how nice it is just to know that you have done one thing right. What you have done, you've watched yourself very carefully when the bad news came to you. You saw your agitation. You know that agitation can never be right for your true life. You see how it supports your false life. You understand that false life is bad for you. Look what you've done. 
if you stop right there. You have kept that knowledge pure up to that point. You haven't sullied it yet. You haven't wrecked it yet. By nervous anticipation and a habit of wanting to add a thrill to everything that goes on in your mind. You have remained thrillless, isolated, all alone, not grabbing, not being greedy, not being greedy for something next. God alone must be the author of every next. And if you even took this first step and stopped there, I would tell you that God himself was the author of that because somewhere, way down deep inside, you did indeed get weary of laughing, of laughing where you shouldn't be laughing, of giving in to wrong things. Somewhere you understood you were doing something wrong. Somewhere it occurred to you that you can't lock yourself up inside yourself anymore. You can't continue with that if you're ever going to set yourself free. And the reason that works is because it gives you a deeper awareness of the fact that you're not free. That urges you to start start just a little bit of time to look for the key. Maybe you'll run across the book. Maybe you'll come to a class. Maybe you'll ask someone a question. All, all because, well, I better tell you this, all of you here tonight and listening to this talk, I better tell you that as an actual fact, your life is not worth living without God. Let me tell you, let me tell you one reason why I stated it that way. See, the devil is very alert too. You take the statement, life is not worth living, he would twist that and make you think that life is not worth living. I said life is not worth living without God, and it isn't. Everyone proves that. You've proven it yourself. Now let's try it from another viewpoint. Your life is worth living only when you invite God, truth, reality, to give you a new life. Now, if you haven't done that yet, you have wasted your life. You have not, you have not been very serious about it, have you? You know what the word frivolous means? Do you, do you know that when your your mind chatters, as it does all day long, all of you, whether you're here, new or old, your mind chatters all day long without purpose, without direction, without benefit, and without ceasing? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Nod your heads, all of you. What a shame. All right. We're here tonight in a place where everything can be different. And I started off, and I'll say it one more time. You can't continue to go on the way you have been unless, unless you like your misery. Unless you like to lie and say that self-enclosure is self-happiness. Your self-enclosure in which you were the only person there is in the world, that is misery. Tell a man, tell a woman all these things we've talked about so far. And what does he do? What stupid reaction does he have? He gets mad. He gets bored. And he yearns, he really yearns, sick yearning. He yearns after being taken out of himself just one inch tonight, which all of you have, new people. 
You've been taken out of yourself for one inch, and it makes you so uncomfortable. You're not used to anything but living in prison. Well, I can understand it perfectly. Absolutely clear that if you were taking one inch out of your precious darling jail cell, you're going to get nervous about it and you're going to get critical. And the whole world does the following. The whole world calls, calls jail freedom, doesn't it? Look how excited people get over being negative, over assaulting someone, especially over pretending that they know what they're doing with their lives. Again, all of you, I, I know you perfectly. I know how your mind works. I know what lies you tell. And here's a foremost one, and you must see it. You're, you're saying, I know what to do with my life. Now let me make a little correction for you. What you, what you are saying, if it was explained to you, you're saying, I know what to do to keep my life as agitated and as prison bound as it is. I know what to do. And all I have to do is never accept any challenge to myself, to my life, whatever. Never accept it. Walk out, walk out of the door, walk away, never having heard anything, never wanting to hear anything. Don't, don't you think? That it's about time you got serious. You're, you're not serious in jail. You're delirious. All people in psychological prison are delirious. They're, as a matter of fact, they're insane. What would you think if I said you're insane? Well, let me tell you what that means. It means you're insane. You, know, you, you see, you compare it with a man walking down the street muttering to himself who can't take care of himself. That's just one form of insanity. Everyone outside the walls of a nut house is, is insane too. Oh, let's have a little fun. we just got a minute left. Let's have a little fun. How would you describe yourself? Go ahead. I'll talk kind of slow and casual. And I want each one of you listening to me to describe to yourself the kind of a person you actually are. See, no one's hearing you. Try to be honest. You lie, you know. If you're talking to someone else, you would lie and try to present a good picture to them, right? What kind of picture you want them to see. Now, no one can see what you're thinking. So you describe to yourself what kind of a, a day you had today, what kind of a whole life you've had. Do you do a lot of fighting? With other people, do a lot of fighting with yourself? Sure, a hermit doesn't meet other people, so he doesn't fight, but he fights with himself. Jealousies, suppression, the whole, the whole business. So, would you call yourself sane or insane? Which would you do? Now, now, if you're crazy, which you are, craziness is misery. <laughs> Let's open the door and tell the world that to be crazy is to be miserable. Who's crazy? I'm happy. He's happy he's going on strike for more money. He's happy. He's happy he bought a new antique clock. He's happy. The whole world is absolutely mad. Everyone in it. That's why everyone is miserable. Happiness is freedom from insanity. You want to be happy? Stop wasting your mind. Stop wasting your life. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting everything. Now, your old nature isn't about to do that. That means you're going to, you're going to have to, against your, against your own will, which is part of the insanity. Against your own will, you're going to have to submit yourself to something that is not you. Huh? You're going to listen to your own crazy mind for the rest of your life? That proves you're mad. One, one little candlelight, a 
of wholeness and of sanity is enough to start. You can get it in this room if you want it badly enough. Want it badly enough. Take a break.